there were a lot of people having problems with Scientology, and they had no place to go. So when I wrote the book, suddenly I began to get a lot of calls and a lot of letters telling me about problems and that nobody would help them. Before the internet, there was no way for people to know what was appearing or happening in another state or whatever, because there were local stories, but you didn't know what was happening in, in one place unless the national wires picked it up, which they didn't. So I became like an internet in those days, and I knew where everything was going. And uh, then they needed people to, to talk publicly against them, which I did, which led to some of the lawsuits that I had. My friends abandoned me because I was just totally obsessed. And the news was just getting worse and worse, and I was hardly in a mood to, to be happy. There was a man that I had been seeing for over a year, and we had talked marriage and children in those days. And uh, he just said I was no fun anymore. And he left me. And this guy that I had been introduced to by Paula took over. And Jerry and I had a platonic relationship at that point. He was, uh, in fact, later on during the frame up, first of all, I couldn't afford the rent. I had moved to a place that was very expensive in anticipation that I was doing so well that I would be able to afford a safer place. But suddenly I couldn't work. So I wasn't making any money. So he paid half the rent, but I also needed someone to go out and buy my vodka and my <laughs> tomato juice and my eggs and my valley and pick them up uh, because I couldn't get out of the house. I was just too, too terrified. So, and Jerry was the guy. Jerry was the guy, but unbeknownst to me, he would go up to the roof every, uh, every night and, you know, because we had a swimming pool at the roof. It was very pleasant, and I didn't think anything of it. But there's two stories that are worth telling about that. After he left, and he left because I confronted him, there was something that happened that made me think that he might be a Scientologist. And he, you know, he disappeared. Then I found out that he was calling in. He was making phone calls, but I never wanted to believe it. It was only years later when they see Scientology papers, and I started reading a diary that said things like, she's talking about suicide today, isn't that great for Scientology? And the more I read it, the more she's going to her lawyer today. Well, who knew these things? And then I realized that Jerry had to have been calling. That, that, those calls that somebody told me he was making, he was calling in what was going on each day. But he was the one friend that you could turn to. Yeah, sure. But you see, what happened was that I found Paula Tyler's photo in a Freedom magazine. And uh, that's when suddenly she disappeared, and then Jerry took over. And then somebody found the name uh, Jerry Levin in a, another freedom, and I confronted him. And he said, oh, you're so paranoid, you know, this is... But he disappeared very quickly. And I've never seen him since. I heard that they uh, sent him to England to get away.